Hi everyone, my name is Jose, or XMIT, and I'm here at Electronics Plus in Kerrville, Texas. We're about to head into the warehouse to see what sort of damage we've had, but as you know, the warehouse here had a flood. We had some storms last week and it was well below freezing in Texas for about a week, causing a lot of pipes to burst. If you are a plumber, please come down to Texas right now. The business is very good and people will be very grateful. But just so you can take a look, here's the warehouse. Here's keyboard truck Mark III. And this is where we'll be today. So in a little bit, I'll meet Alec Plus and we'll go inside and assess the damage. As I'm waiting here for Alec Plus, I'm watching all of your donations coming in through the GoFundMe and I just wanted to say thank you so much. Yeah, it's my goal to reach out to each and every one of you individually after your donations. Um, it really means a lot. I mean, I don't know what you can see. I'll try to make a spin here, but you know, Kerrville, Texas is not is not a wealthy area. You know, a lot of us have the privilege of living in a in a major city. A lot of us, you know, in keyboards got into keyboards because we're very technical people and are able to afford all the keyboards we could want. But, you know, for, for Alec Plus, this is really a way of life. And it's a way of life that's kind of lost now. With the flood doing the warehouse in, with supply drying up, it's a challenging time. Alec Plus also battles some health issues. So I, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much again. Um, I don't know how you feel about GoFundMe as a platform. I chose it because it's easier for me and because here in the United States it's pretty popular. Um, you know, I, I'm a very boots on the ground sort of person, so I donate my time and my expertise and my ability more directly when I'm able to. Um, I, I do want to be transparent and say that you know, GoFundMe does take a cut of your donations, and I, I'm pledging to pay whatever their cut is for each and every single one of you. So know that if you donate five dollars, five dollars will go to, to Elec Plus to help with all the recovery work. Um, so I'm still waiting here, and uh, I've got eight bins in the back of the keyboard truck here that will fill with whatever needs to go, and I, I guess we'll, we'll see what's inside today. All right, so we've got the warehouse open. So let's take a look inside. We've got the camera going here. So the first thing we notice coming in is the odor. Um, now, I, this is my first time here in, in some time. Uh, Electronics Plus used to have both stories of this warehouse, but right now we've just got one. So, yeah, Electronics Plus was a kind of a big recycler in the area, getting stuff in from San Antonio and really all over. Terminal, CRTs, PCs. This has been here for a while. Now, Alec Plus has asked not to be on camera, so we're going to respect that. You know, there's definitely a a smell in here, kind of a smell of, you know, not really too much organic. Wet cardboard, some mold, some must. You know, lots of lots of Model M's here, some laptops. I mean, again, I've been to this warehouse many times. Um, so the goal today, since this warehouse is going to be shutting down pretty soon, is just to save whatever I can in this first run. I mean, even with keyboard truck Mark III, even with my eight bins, there's really only so much I can take, and it's just kind of a small, you know, just a small sampling of what's here. So, what we're gonna do is just start with the high value items and get the move to a, to a better spot. All sorts of stuff here. This almost looks like a, like a Lear Sigler terminal or something like that. Same styling, at least. No, but what do we see here? Model M's, lots and lots of Model M's. Um, you know, I see uh, a Futaba keyboard down here. I remember packing many of these bins, uh, and they've since been further rearranged. It's all sorts of stuff. Um, and, and, and previously, and I'm talking 2015, you know, all of this would have been shelves, floor to ceiling, and multiple aisles. I mean, what the f square footage we've not got now is a quarter of what it used to be. It used to be all of this first floor and upstairs. 
Um, so it, again, things look deceptively good right now. Um, you know, we've got a lot of boxes here that we were hoping to be able to reuse. And we'll just see what sort of condition they're in. I mean, it's been several days. After the floods, we've had a few dry days. Right now, it's about 15 Celsius or 59 Fahrenheit. And it's cloudy. It's a little bit humid. Um, so, I've heard that all these books are basically a write-off at this point. Um, no, again, this is just my first pass through the warehouse. Every bit of that's soaked. Yeah. The top shelf is the old original programs, everything from TRS-80 cassette tapes on down. 80 cassettes. So lots of old books here. I mean, this is really just a museum. And it's sort of unfortunate that, you know, that so much of it is going to have to be a write-off. I personally am optimistic. Um, or maybe I just haven't really seen the extent of the of the carnage yet, but um, we've got about a month to clear everything out. So just depending on how things go, I may be coming back with a trailer to help haul stuff, or much of this may be going in the dumpster. Yeah, so here's what, uh, what a waterlogged F-122 looks like. And again, I don't want to accept any inquiries for particular units. We need to still go through and figure out what's what. So if you ask me if something's for sale, the answer is no. Um, but the intent, of course, is to move all of these. So um, so how high would you say the water was? Did it, was this carpet soaked? Could you see the Look on the, the wall over there by the door, there's a mark. Uh-huh, right here. So this is about, um, I don't know, let's find a good size reference here. The water line's right at the F10 key. Now I'm gonna say that that's about 25, 30 centimeters right there. And it was all, it was that way all the way back, wasn't it? Huh. Yep. What a shame. What a crying shame. And it wasn't, I mean, we're on a water plane here. Now I expected the flood water to be coming up from the, from the river, but you said it was a, a line in the ceiling that burst. So water damage is a cruel and arbitrary thing. If we look closely here, we can see the discoloration on the beam, which indicates that parts of the beam are still quite wet. All the water came from above. I mean, if we look here, we can see the wet floor up on top. So bins that had lids on them seem to have been spared the worst of the damage. But bins that were open, I mean, you can see this is about six centimeters of water here. You know, it's just, it's just not, not great for these old electronics. You know, if we just look around, here's a funny thing of being in a space like this. I've already gotten used to the odor. So I have to remind myself that, that it's still, pretty bad. You know, coming over here, you know, these are first generation Pentium Xeons and they're just soaked. And, you know, I mean, we can clean a lot of electronics with distilled or deionized water and they'll be just fine so long as there's not electrolytic capacitors or what have you. So many, much of the stuff may be salvageable if it finds the right buyer who's patient. You know, they, so these, uh, these TI systems back here were soaked, but yet this bin of Xboxes was fine. So it just depends on exactly what was where, whether it had a lid. Um, you know, there's no rhyme or reason for it. But for those of you who are storing your keyboards, you know, maybe I would suggest not using cardboard boxes necessarily. Maybe I'd suggest using bins with lids, opening them periodically. Um, you know, maybe keeping some desiccant in there if you're able to, although it won't really help when you've got so much water. Um, you know, a lot of these M's managed to get off with very minimal damage. So we're almost ready to call it a day here. Um, this is a bin of just IBM keycaps. For all of you Model M, Model F lovers out there. And this is a bin of kind of the last of the Model M's that we're loading up. Again, nothing's for sale at this point. Everything still has to be processed on arrival, but 
There are six more bins like this already in the van, in the keyboard truck. Load in is complete. Eight black and yellow tubs, a whole bunch of bins of keycaps, and a few other things. This is not my first rodeo, so I can tell you that making everything so organized now makes unloading on the destination so much easier. I can have this truck unloaded in five or 10 minutes. In addition to the bins, I think the single best idea today was this foldable wagon. It unfolds and it fits one bin perfectly. So it's good for saving the back when you have to move things about 100 feet or longer. Highly recommended. Well, it's been fun. Now I get to drive home.